Hello, my name is Koji Otsuki and I'm a Bach specialist and director of the Gamut Bach Ensemble. This group may be familiar to some of the PCMS patrons. I'm also a friend of violinist Joseph Linz of more than a couple of decades. This video is the pre-concert talk for his two Bach solo recitals, upcoming in November 2020 and the other in April 2021 that complete the all six solo works. At the time of this video recording, among those six works, he is scheduled to play the first sonata in G minor, the first partita in B minor, and the third sonata in C major in November, and all the rest in April. Joe and I met for the first time in summer 1999 in Marlborough, Vermont. I was a young staff member at the Chamber Music Festival there, and he was the second year participant and a student at Harvard. He was already viewed by so many others as an extraordinarily gifted and promising violinist then. And I was just a Bach geek who was going to Temple grad school to study choral conducting just because he wanted to conduct Bach's vocal works. It wasn't that we had a lot in common, but I cherished conversations with him very much, and we kept in touch. Since then, I've had several opportunities to hear him play the Bach solo over the years. I've even asked him to play some Bach solos in the concert that I directed in Williamsport, Pennsylvania back in 2001. He had played some of them for me in private and I was lucky enough to hear him play all six of them in one day when he performed the complete six solos in Tokyo, Japan just a couple of years ago. Obviously, his interpretations are evolving and his take on a specific thing was different back then, but so were my knowledge and experience. Comparing what I felt before and what I feel now, listening to his playing is irrelevant. Still, I can tell you this. It is truly amazing to witness Joe's musical journey, and I feel honored that he's been willing to continue sharing it with me all those years. This time, I hear from Joe that he's attempting to explore a whole new sonic world of Bach six solos. At the time of this video recording, he is determined to play the recitals with a Baroque setup. That means he's stringing gut strings on his violin and he is using his Baroque bow to play it. He will be playing at a much lower pitch than the modern pitch. Now, what do those things mean? He's essentially challenging himself to rethink the whole thing. The way he was playing the violin before would not work on the Baroque setup. He would not be able to force the bow on the strings because gut strings, especially the plain ones, do not respond to the pressure well. And he would not be able to use the faster bow speed that he's accustomed to. Not only because the gut strings respond better to slower bows, but also because a Baroque bow would be much shorter than a modern bow. The gut strings also have much narrower sweet spots. What do I mean by that? The modern strings allow a player to be less picky about where on the string you play to produce a wanted sound. Even if you miss the optimal position on the string, it would still sound adequate. But if you miss the sweet spot on the gut strings, the instrument won't give you the solid sound that you may want. This is not all negative, actually. You can take that as your advantage. By intentionally missing the sweet spot, usually by playing away from the bridge, you can effectively play down some notes that you don't want to underscore. A Baroque bow is essentially like a whole new instrument. Uh, shorter, lighter, and less haired Baroque bows 
can articulate and shape notes easily and differently from modern counterparts. The shape of the early Baroque bows allows you to make the dipping motion that is just not possible on the modern bows. But worth mentioning is that Joe is not changing his style from the modern playing to the period playing. Joe is not going to tell you that he plays with the historically informed practice in mind. His endeavor is not about historical authenticity. He is exploring what he can do as a violinist with the Baroque setup's potential and possibility. He is finding deeper connections to the music through the process. It has been a, a gradual process for him, and by immersing himself in this project, he's just getting into the new expressive realm. Now, this excites me. Well, some people often assume that I frown upon such an attempt as an individual specialized in an informed approach to Bach. Still, I know that his intention is genuine. His analyses are always careful and thorough. It may not be in the Baroque musical language. Still, often you can tell that his ideas are not really disconnected from the informed approach. I really cannot wait to hear what he comes up with. It's so exciting to see where he is in his Bach journey today and to find out what the new setup allows him to do with the limitations the setup itself also imposes on him. I just briefly mentioned the period playing or the informed approach. What's so different about so-called historically informed performances or HIP? Or how different are they compared with the traditional approach, you may be wondering. They are quite different indeed, but there's a good reason why those disparities exist, especially for Bach. Let me explain. Johann Sebastian Bach was born in 1685 and died in 1750. According to music history textbooks, the Baroque period ended in his death year in 1750. What that implies is that Bach was the composer to represent the last part of the period, and the period ended when he died, not when Handel died in 1759, and not when Telemann died in 1767. Bach was the last one of those great masters to keenly adhere to the Baroque musical aesthetics when it was mostly a thing of the past. The new style that replaced the Baroque style was more about clarity and simplicity in terms of texture, proportion, and structure. The era that followed the Baroque is called the Classical Period, and it represented an aesthetical attitude that resonated specifically with neoclassicism in visual art history. But what I sense is that the Baroque music getting disfavored and being replaced by the so-called classical style directly correlates with the Age of Enlightenment. The Enlightenment is the philosophical and intellectual movement that swept through entire Europe in the 18th century. It was the movement aimed for the triumph of reason over faith and belief, fighting against what was perceived as irrational and obscure. Some main principles that stemmed from this movement include individual liberty, religious tolerance, constitutional government, separation of church and state, etc. Yes, if you just thought that those ideas sounded like America's founding documents, you're right. Those were written by the American Enlightenment thinkers. Now, going back to the music from the Age of Enlightenment, what did the Enlightenment composers want in music? How do they contrast with Bach's music? If classical music was about clarity and simplicity, among other things, was box music not about those things? Not really. The contrast was quite stark. 
let's compare the texture. By texture, I mean the, the density of voices or parts and also the complexity of their roles. For example, when you have keyboard music with two different parts, namely the right hand part that plays the melody and the left hand part that plays the accompaniment, you could say that the texture of this music is light because there are only two parts. At the same time, the texture is simple because the roles of those parts are clear, melody and accompaniment. But the Baroque music in general, and especially box music, was quite different. The texture was often complex and dense, meaning the functions of individual voices in box piece often aren't clear enough, and those voices can be all protagonists. For example, those violin solo works that Joe is playing for you, it's not always clear how many voices are being employed at a particular time. Even when you see just one line going on or hear just one note played at a time, multiple voices can be outlined in that line to give you the sense that it is a counterpoint or it has multi-layered texture. The roles of those voices are in many cases obscure in box music. Sometimes it's difficult to figure out which voice is the principal voice and which voices are taking on the supporting roles. But you know what? Complexity and obscurity are what made Baroque music, well, Baroque. Baroque music was about obscurity, complexity, unevenness, unexpectedness, and all those things in one. Well, the Enlightenment was the movement that tried to eliminate obscure things. And chances are, some of those Enlightenment musicians disapproved, if not despised, the Baroque style well before 1750 and considered it outdated. It was well documented that in 1737, Bach's own former student, Johann Adolf Scheibe, criticized Bach in a music periodical, saying that Bach's style is bombastic and confused. He says that in Bach's music, and I quote, all the voices must work with each other and be of equal difficulty, and none of them can be recognized as the principal voice, and unquote. It wasn't really that Scheibe didn't appreciate or respect Bach's music. It was just this dominating movement strongly influenced him and almost everybody else. It was the time that people called for a different style. In the age of enlightenment, musicians and music patrons didn't really look back at the preceding period's music. It was just their contemporary works that they cared about. Some classical composers did have access to Bach's music, and we know that the great composers like Mozart and Beethoven appreciated Bach tremendously. But also, when it reached the early Romanticism, did the Bach become more accessible to those who sought access. I'm not going to get into the details of how the Bach revival happened in the early 19th century, but I'd like to point out the fact that Bach's music in general had been almost entirely forgotten by the general public for about 80 years in the history of Western music. In the case of the six solos that you will hear played by Joe, Bach completed them exactly 300 years ago in 1720, and their most famous and popular movement, the Chacona from the Second Partita, or the Chacon, got the first documented performance in 1840. That's 90 years after the composer's death. By the way, this 1840 performance was by Ferdinand David, who was a close friend of Felix Mendelssohn Balzoldi's. 
David was actually accompanied by Mendelssohn on the piano. Yes, David himself or Mendelssohn didn't think the audience was ready to hear it without piano accompaniment, perhaps because that music was too obscure. By the way, a little side note, Ferdinand David was the leader of the second orchestra in Mendelssohn's famous revival performance of Bach's St. Matthew Passion in Berlin in 1829. The first revival performance that year was on March 11th, and that's my son's birthday. Also, David was the soloist when Mendelssohn premiered his famous violin concerto in E minor in Leipzig in 1845. Just one more. David was born in the same house as Mendelssohn, only 16 and a half months apart. In the Romantic period, Bach's solo works, not only the six solos for the violin, but also the six solo suites for the cello, were considered somewhat incomplete. Probably, again, too obscure, too vague, and too unclear, or so people then must have thought. The Baroque concept, such as musical rhetoric, was utterly gone. It was like, say, uh, they discovered a Baroque recipe and wanted to reproduce the Baroque dish from it, but they didn't understand the instructions on the recipe. How much was a Baroque spoonful? What this cooking utensil mentioned in the recipe was? How to obtain those ingredients listed? They didn't know. They couldn't figure it out. So they used what they knew and what they had. That's the modern violin and the romantic violin techniques. Publishers tried to make things less obscure and more accessible by editing the Bach heavily with dynamic marks, articulation marks, and sometimes with additional notes. One might say today that those people in the 19th century were terribly misguided because of their ignorance. That may be true in retrospect, but when the knowledge was not available, when there was no correct way, how could we say they were wrong? Whatever they decided to do became the norm as a matter of course. The Baroque music playing on the modern instruments had, since then, moved further away from the obliterated original way as the materials for the strings kept changing. For example, during the Romantic period, the strings used on the violins were pretty much the same as those in the Baroque, namely plain gut for the top th three strings and wound gut for the bottom string. But in the early 20th century, around World War I, the gut string makers had to produce surgical gut sutures instead of the instrument strings. And consequently, string players were forced to look elsewhere for the strings. After this war, steel strings and other metal wound strings became the standard setup for the violins and the players adopted their techniques to utilize or in some cases to hide the shortcomings of the new steel and metal strings. After World War II and after losing so many original instruments and documents, including some original works by Bach in the bombing on German soil, there came the dawn of the modern musicology. The Neue Bach Gesellschaft, or the New Bach Society, started the new project in 1950 to publish the new critically edited complete works, or the Neue Bach Ausgabe. The first volume came out in 1954. They took 53 years to complete this project, though some updated volumes to replace the older volumes have still been coming out. 
in the area of performance practice, so much has been discovered or rediscovered in the last 70 years. We had gained so much more context that can shape our understanding of the performance practice when reading the treatises and the theory books from the Baroque. And the new knowledge from the musicological discoveries really advanced the field of historically informed performances in the past 30 to 40 years. The period instrument ensembles are no longer the novelty today, even in the United States. Period instrument recordings are available everywhere. Going back to the discussion of the traditional or informed way of playing Bach today, now you know the reason why we could have such an extreme disparities between two different interpretations. But the thing is, there can be an amazing performance of Bach on a modern instrument filled with sincerity, humility, and substance. On the other hand, uh, there can be a very poor performance on a period instrument that just imitates the Baroque style and stays at the level of a mediocre historical reenactment without the period costume. Bach's music is so great, it demands your respect, humility, and genuineness. It always comes down to how you face it as a player in the end. Please enjoy Joe's Bach recital. As I said earlier, I personally cannot wait to listen to his Bach and see where he is in the Bach journey that he is on and to see how he exploits the new realm of expression with the Baroque setup. Thank you very much.